Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, as it helps the YouTube algorithm and the videos get highly uh, ranked. And before we get into the fundamentals and technicals for this week, I just want to inform you about a webinar that my Myself and Mark Chapman are holding a webinar this week. Um, it's absolutely free. First day is going to be on Wednesday, the 16th of February, and I'm going to show you the three steps to generating a profitable Forex trade idea, right? When it comes to fundamental analysis, a lot of people think that fundamentals are just looking at Forex Factory and uh, taking a trade when there is good news or, you know, selling when there's bad news. It's nothing of the sort. And this, um, what I'm going to show you in the webinar is stuff that will work forever because it's really how the institutions trade and how they make their trading decisions with fundamentals. These are the three steps to generating a profitable Forex trading idea and ideas and it will consistently work over and over and over again because this is the mechanics of the market. And if you want to join the, uh, the free webinar on Wednesday, day one, just uh, email info at trading180.com with the subject title webinar. That's it. Um, you, you, know, you can put a little thing in there just saying I want to join the webinar, but just a subject title um, and I will. you'll be put on the list. I'll put you on the list um, for the uh, day one and also day two which is with uh, Mark Chapman and he will be showing you the footprints of the market uh, whales and how to trade alongside them and this is really the market makers bible now regardless of what you think you know and regardless of what has been taught online on youtube on tiktok on facebook those guys have no idea right and it's not me disparaging anybody but mark's uh mate i guess was, was an ex-market maker and he'll tell you about it and anyone who knows mark who knows me will understand this to be fact what you see online about market makers is totally off, right? Mark's mate was a market maker, retired, what was a, a retired, is a retired market maker. And the concepts that he's going to show you, some of the concepts he's going to, concepts he's going to show you on Thursday are the business model of the market maker, right? It's not anything you see online. It's not the concepts of what you think the market makers do. Um, that's just a, a massive echo chamber, you know, made up by, you know, certain people. This is totally, totally, totally different. This is the truth. Anyways, um, again, uh, that's day two on Thursday, right? The 17th of February. The uh, again, email info at trading180.com with the subject title webinar, and uh, you will be included and put on the list. And I really highly, um, you know, recommend that you at least attend uh, Thursday and myself and my webinar, of course, but you know, the two days, and then we have a weekend uh, retreat uh, the, uh, the, the coming weekend as well. So anyways, let's get into this week's fundamental analysis and looking at really the news and the calendar uh, for this week. So Monday the 14th of February, uh, happy Valentine's Day for anyone who's separating, um, celebrating um, Valentine's Day. Uh, we've got uh, really, Christine Lagarde speaks whenever there's a central bank speech. Um, that's always worth uh, um, paying attention to. GDP growth rate as well for Japan. That would dictate what the uh, central bank does with interest rates. On Tuesday, we've got the Fed, um, sorry, the RBA meeting. I can't read today. We've got the RBA meeting, uh, Reserve, um, Reserve Bank of Australia. Um, we've got unemployment for the uh, for the pound, and again, this is all important because it shows really what the um, uh, what the economy is doing and whether uh, central banks can really afford to uh, high rates at some point. Um, again, we've got some employment changes, change numbers. Uh, on Wednesday, we've got Chinese inflation, which is worth a watch. And then we've got, again, the pound uh, inflation rate year on year. Um, again, inflation rate for the cat, uh, for the Canadian dollar. Again, it's expected, I think, what's the forecast? Forecast expected to actually be, to be higher. So again, any forecast that expects to be higher on inflation piles pressure on the um 
on the central bank to have to hike rates and if it does obviously come out as that then you know we'll uh it's pretty much a foregone conclusion um again fomc minutes on the wednesday which is definitely going to be you know the, the highlight of the uh, the week on thursday we've got unemployment rate for the for the australian dollar um and then japan inflation again expected to probably tick up just a little bit um but not by much so again the the uh, Bank of Japan are expected to just kind of hold rates at the moment for the foreseeable future. And then uh, on Friday, uh, nothing really, nothing really important. I know it says that's important, but it really isn't. Um, and then that is that. So, so let's get into the dollar index. And the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of major currencies like the uh, the pound, the euro, and the yen. And I've kept last week's analysis on here because um, last week I was saying my bias was really to the upside with the dollar. And um, and so, uh, yeah, I was looking at either, you know, um, confluence, uh, looking at dollar index uh, buys, for example, if prices came down to that 95 area, 94.60, then um, I was looking at potential buys. And I was even, you know, uh, looking at, you know, if prices came down to that 94 area, that would be a, definitely a great buy. And um, just getting into, I guess, some fundamentals on the, on the dollar. Um, we were looking at, uh, well, this week, the Fed's Bullard uh, back supersized hike seeks full point by the 1st of July. So inflationary shock needs big response, he says in an interview. And the uh, St. Louis Fed chief defers to Powell on size of March increase. And this is really because um, that the uh, U.S. inflation is at its highest level since uh, well, in, in like 40 years, four decades so um, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, the bank have to do something about inflation, which is uh, to hike rates. And so uh, they were wrong about um, uh, inflation being transitory or temporary. They thought it would come down and it's, uh, you know, getting out of hand, not only with in the US economy, but with um, with uh, economies all around the world. So but the US are literally now looking to hike more um, uh, to try to combat inflation. Um, so uh, we see the Federal Reserve, St. Louis President James Bullard said he supports raising interest rates by a full percentage point by the start of July, including the first half point hike since 2000 in response to the hottest inflation in four decades. So, um, you know, there is uh, that going on. So with the, you know, US dollar, um, you know, aggressively hiking, you know, you should see upside. Now, again, um, nobody knows what happened in the short term because uh, in the short term, uh, the you know, price is really just uh, an auction, um, an order filling mechanism for the banks uh, to try and get the best prices and, you know, to, to get the liquidity, right? So you could have prices, you know, it's not saying prices this week are going to go all the way to the upside because like I said, nobody knows. But generally what we should, you know, know between now and uh, the first Fed rate hike and the uh, second one potentially in in um, in maybe uh, June July times is that you know the the, the bank are actively seeking to uh, hike rates so prices should want to continue going higher um, in the medium to long term so for me my bias has not changed so uh, let me just get rid of uh, some of this uh, drawing from last week so for me um, again just really pull back and I can now neaten this up a little bit. Uh, when it comes to a bit of a demand zone. So uh, there we are, we've got some hidden demand there. So any pullbacks into this zone here and then looking for long trades, not on the dollar index, but on just, just for as far as confluence of prices do pull back and you start to see some bullish price action, that would be uh, quite nice. <clears throat> you know, for confluence on buying any of the uh, other dollar currencies. So moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen, again, last week's um, analysis, uh, we were looking at, you know, potential pullbacks because you never really want to buy at an expensive area. You don't want to buy at highs. Um, you're looking to buy, you know, on pullbacks. And what I was looking for, if I'm long dollars, obviously is a pullback, right? So we need prices to pull back. Unfortunately, price just didn't pull back. Um, which kind of changes this dynamic. So let me just actually start with a brand new clear chart. And what we've got now is, you know, demand zone there, demand zone there, and I'll just draw this one right here as well. Um, 
just to keep it uh, nice and uh, simple. So um, for now, for me anyway, prices are coming back um, into a zone. Now, we do also have uh, risk off sentiment, risk off sentiment, meaning that there's some fear, uncertainty and some doubt coming into the market. And that is really driven by uh, Russia tensions, a potential invasion uh, by, um, you know, by Russia. So on Ukraine, so if that does escalate and nobody knows at the moment whether it will, uh, you know, uh, it result in a full blown, you know, war out and out war. If it does, um, the Japanese yen is likely to strengthen, right? It's likely to strengthen. So you could see prices, you know, come to the downside. For me, though, I prefer um, to still buy the dollar at certain levels um, because at some point I'm a believer that, you know, the... Uh, um, the war will be resolved, right? There are, um, uh, uh, we, no one wants war and uh, we, we generally want peace as, as human beings. So, um, you know, I think I think that if war does, you know, break out, I think it may, um, I don't know whether it lasts, you know, too long, who knows? But the point being is that at some point, war will be priced in. It won't be a, a, a phenomena anymore, um, unfortunately. But, um, but for me, I think that the uh, um, when it comes to the dollar, I'm still a buyer of the dollar, really, and um, I'm a believer that you know there will be um, a resolution to the uh, Russia uh, Ukraine tensions. There will be an agreement, etc. So if prices do come down to any of these demand zones, I'm still looking at buy trades um, uh, at these areas, providing obviously I get an entry trigger and what the, the, the actual setup is. Uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss and similar to the uh, to the dollar yen, um, last week again, still looking for buy trades, looking for pullbacks um, uh, into certain areas. We have made higher highs, higher lows. So let me just delete last week's analysis. There's a nice demand zone there and uh, this whole area is demand so if prices do pull back into this area but similar to the uh, the, the dollar yen the, the Swiss franc will tend to strengthen uh, as a risk off currency a safe haven currency so um, you could see prices start to go you know through these uh, demand zones when it comes to fundamentals and risk sentiment there's no demand zone no technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of um, of what the market thinks the value of a currency is the market is not driven by technical analysis it's uh, driven by um, you know liquidity and uh, and really in value right so um, any pullbacks into demand zones for me are buying opportunities um, and uh, that's really where my, my where my bias is and all risk off does is just push prices down to where I want to be you know a nice a nice buyer and buying at value so that's where we are if you look if you are looking at buying the uh, the Swiss franc I think you know anywhere up, up in these zones here um, is decent although those zones have been touched several times so just be aware that the more times the level is touched and the zone is touched is the, the the weaker it becomes it's no longer a bargain anymore because it was a bargain first time here bargain a bit of a bargain there but not so much and obviously uh, that price becomes starts to become just average now um, so yeah that's where we are uh, my bias is definitely to the uh, to the upside in the medium to long term for sure moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD again from last week's analysis. When you've got two strong currencies or two central banks that look into high crates, then you will, um, uh, you know, you, you'll have generally a, a, a sideways moving market, a ranging market, a value auction, and uh, and so for me, uh, this was you know predictable, and um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not really looking to trade this pair. Uh, let me just delete some of this uh, last week's analysis off and again um, it's just a case of if you think that you want to be a buyer of the US dollar looking for pullbacks into that area or a reversal at that supply zone um, not really a pair I'm interested in like I said two central banks looking to hike um, at the moment so uh, so you're going to get this this type of price action you really want to see um, uh, pairs that are diverging in you know monetary policy although overall that that divergence is coming a bit coming to an end uh, with certain pairs moving on to the uh, pound dollar and again two central banks um, you know pretty much um, hiking rates aggressively so again you expect to see a fair fight right you've got you know price action just literally over the past five days has gone in this uh, in this range so again just deleting last week's um, analysis 
um, and looking at really the pound fundamentals as well. Um, the, Euro, the UK economy um, sees best annual growth since World War II in 2021. So there was some really good news on, with the pounds. The GDP expanded 7.5% in 2021, putting UK at the top of the G7 league. So surge came despite December's drop when Omicron hit spending. So um, again, the pound doing really well. Uh, one of the best um, you know currencies when it comes to uh, um, or economies when it comes to GDP growth. So um, so from that perspective, again, you've also got the US dollar doing really well economic growth. So like I said, there's no divergence there, right? You're seeing price kind of moving this, uh, uh, or a bit value of the uh, of the uh, pound dollar being accepted between this high and this low. So, um, but if you do want to get um, long on that, on that dollar, then it's literally a pullback into that zone there. I think um, probably you're looking at maybe some of the 137s, one three seven fifties for a decent uh, short trade if you're looking to buy the uh, the US dollar. So if you're buying, looking to buy the British pound, it's really um, pullbacks to demand zones. If you if you're buying the US dollar, then it's and then, it, then it's pretty much pullbacks to any kind of supply zones. But again, not really a currency play that I'm looking to get involved in. And the euro dollar, the euro dollar. So um, this was an interesting one. We got involved in this trade. Uh, many traders in the uh, the, the, the group uh, got involved in this trade. So that was, uh, um, and uh, we're up um, a few, maybe about 100, 150 pips, depending on where they depending on where they got in. Some traders got in at the um, uh, 1480 area. Um, I got in at the, I think it was the 1473 area, right around here. So um, yeah, with with tensions going on in um, in Russia and Europe probably being the most affected, um, you know, it was pretty much a, a, a nice uh, trade so far, taking partial profits, and so that's worked out to be quite nice. Um, also, as well, looking at Europe from a fundamental perspective, ECB overreaction on prices could stymie growth. Rain warns. So. Um, the European Central Bank needs to look beyond the current spike in inflation as it sets monetary policy to avoid choking off economic growth, Governing Council member Oli Rain said. And the reason why is because if you rate high rates a bit too much, um, the economy might not be able to um, to, to handle um, expensive borrowing and lending. And so what then tends to happen is uh, businesses start to struggle with higher repayments and then you um you know you get um a stagnant economy and potentially economies can go into um you know back into recession right so from that perspective if you you know you got central banks have got to be more gentle with hiking rates so um you know the the, the problem is with the uh with europe is that their their economy isn't um growing as, as much as say for example the uk or the us so from that perspective, again, last week's analysis, my biases was to the short side. Um, you know, it pretty much is, is worked out quite nicely. Now, I do think that the downside is going to be capped. I'm not to say, I'm not saying it's going to come all the way down here. It could do, of course, but my my I'm, I'm pretty um, uh, convinced. I should say that maybe the one thirteens, maybe even down to potentially the one twelve, is maybe maybe going to be the absolute limit of this move. Um, because uh, yeah, now you've got the uh, the euro looking. They are looking to hike rates and change policies. So I think downside may be capped. But this was a really nice, uh, really nice trade um, setup uh, that we saw in the group and uh, up uh, over about over a hundred pips on this one. So uh, again, going forward, I probably think uh, if you are looking to buy the euro, again we are looking at that one twelve uh, four area. Uh, for a buy trade, I think if you're looking at you know shorting right now, I think the, the trade's probably already gone depending on your risk reward and uh, any kind of pullbacks potentially up to this area or just a, a, a bit higher would be um, probably more advantageous. If you are in this trade, uh, it's probably advisable to at least uh, look to take some profits at some point. You know, we've got our targets that we look to take profits at, but um, but yeah, a decent trade. Again, my bias is still to the downside for now um, and buying the US dollar over the euro. Uh, moving on to the Australian dollar, US dollar, and um, we did get a spike higher uh, this week and again there was a nice shorting opportunity so prices had you know spiked beyond that supply zone there and uh, then as uh, we saw from a risk off perspective 
nice, nice trade to the downside. I'm not really interested in trading this, to be fair. Um, but uh, the, you know, technically there was a, there was a nice level just above that, and prices in a risk-off environment, you know, the U.S. dollar should uh, should should strengthen. If you do want to get long in that Australian dollar, there is a demand zone right here, uh, demand, which potentially you can get involved in, looking at any kind of long trades to that side or even better that would be a nice a nice price to the uh, to the upside but again in a risk off environment um, if risk off continues um, nobody knows we'll find out on you know Sunday evening but if uh, there's no resolution then I think the dollar should continue to to strengthen and uh, talking about uh, risk off gold is now you know finally reacted and um, it's reacted really more to the to the risk off sentiment um, that has happened so we see gold uh you know money flowing into gold piling into gold you know there was a, a really nice area uh, a couple of weeks ago to look to get long that i'd identified and had you got involved in that you know thinking that gold was going to go higher and risk off tensions then that's worked out to be a fantastic trade um for now though you've got these areas here of demand so uh, if risk off continues, then, you know, basically he's looking for pullbacks. And as I always say is, you know, you might see a supply zone above, but it doesn't mean that you should take it because again, fundamentals and risk sentiment are the drivers of price. Traders generally, you know, technicals will go out of the window um, and generally go out the window anyway, um, when um, you've got uh, a, a lot of volatility and a lot of reasons to buy and sell from a fundamental and, and risk sentiment perspective. Nobody cares that there's a supply zone here, right? They don't care that there's supply there, supply there if they think that tensions are going to drive prices and the valuation of gold should be up here. So, you, you know, you shouldn't be driven by, um, by, by technical analysis. Technical analysis is really only used um, to, to, to time you know, your entries and manage your risk. What you, know, you should be looking at ultimately is deciding on which way to buy or sell based off of fundamentals and risk sentiment. And uh, again, um, if you want to join the, uh, the webinar and the weekend retreat, um, just email info at uh, trading180.com with the subject line, um, uh, webinar and uh, you'll be added to the list for the to the free webinar list so um, for gold at the moment if you are looking at risk off and you think that risk off is going to prevail it's really just pullbacks into you know the demand zone but if you believe that the um, the, 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 the there is going to be a resolution um, and the dollar is going to strengthen as well as inflation coming back to the downside then this is going to be a really nice opportunity to look for potential short trades but you'd have to really kind of watch uh, the headlines um, and to see what what is going on um, with uh, risk sentiment anyways with that being said uh, yeah that's it for this week and um, again uh, just uh, um, if you do want to join the uh, webinar email me info at trading180.com and um, I'll see you on, on the webinar on Wednesday. Take care and speak to you soon.